Okay, hello. In this extra lesson, we are trying to uh, give more details about Shakespeare's sonnets um, and uh, how to analyze sonnets. Um, you know that um, the sonnet, you have already studied the uh, Petrarchan sonnet, so you are quite familiar with this kind of poetry. But, with this kind of poem, uh, but I mm, can tell you that the sonnet is a poem containing, made up of four li 14 lines, um, and from this point of view, it is really similar to the Petrarchan sonnet. In the Shakespearean sonnet, the lines are made of iambic pentameters, and the rhyme scheme is constant. It is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G, okay? So you see that we have three stanzas of four lines and a final couplet. But you see that there is a particular definition, iambic pentameter. Okay, what is the iambic pentameter? You probably remember something from last year, but I'm repeating everything. So uh, the division, when we divide a poem, a, po a line, the line of a poem uh, into metrical feet, okay, uh, these are the metrical feet, we see that each metrical feet is made up of a plane, syllable and uh, so an unstressed syllable and a stressed one okay so uh, you see unstressed and stressed unstressed and stressed and so on so we have one uh, foot two three four five so when we find five feet uh, with these unstressed and stressed alternation, we call them iambic pentameter. Iambic, because we have the alternation unstressed, stressed, and pentameter, because we have five feet. Okay? So, that's easy <laughs> to say and to understand. Uh, but when did Shakespeare write sonnets? Because we know that Shakespeare is basically a playwright, okay? But we have to, you have to know that when he was born in Stratford-upon-Avon, uh, England was already affected by plague. And in particular, so he also risked his life during his, uh, his uh, childhood, but he survived. And when he finally left his, uh, his uh, city, his village, his uh, uh, hometown and moved to London, there was a period, unfortunately, um, in which London was affected again by the uh, plague. It was the period which started more or less in 1592-93 when Shakespeare was just uh, 28 and it lasted for uh, five years, okay, so quite a long period. Uh, in this period the theatres were closed because people crowded the theatres, there were a lot of people going to theatre and it was dangerous because as it is happening right, uh, just in these days uh, to the cinemas and to the um, meetings, uh, meeting points, in this period theatres were um, a place where there was the widespread of infection, it was easier uh, to have a widespread, for example, of plague. So, uh, the theatres were closed and William, in order to survive, as he didn't have a real job apart from being an actor, he had to find a patron, okay? Uh, who is the patron? As you told me uh, last time, it was, in Italian, it was uh, um, uh, un... Uh, 
uh, a patron, I have forgotten the, the name, the Italian translation for patron, mecenate. Okay, so he found this man, uh, this young, um, very also very uh, handsome man, the Earl of Southampton. Earl is um, uh, a title, a noble title, a title of nobility. Uh, who supported him in exchange of his sonnets, okay, and in the sonnets, of course, William celebrated his beauty, his fame, so he was really happy for that. But his sonnets also were dedicated to a dark lady whose identity is practically unknown. We don't know who the dark lady was. We can imagine there are some pictures, but everything is not very clear as most of the things about Shakespeare. And he probably, so he probably wrote his sonnets in the period between 1593 and 1598. And we have a total of 154 sonnets. Uh, you can see here uh, pictures. Uh, this uh, was uh, uh, painting a portrait of the Earl of Southampton. So it was, as you can see, was handsome, quite uh, a female beauty. And these uh, could have been um, the dark lady. Uh, probably dark because of the dark hair, but if we read the sonnets, it is possible to imagine it that she also had dark skin. Um, okay, the other question is, what are the main themes of his sonnets? We have, as all the sonnets, as also the Petrarchan sonnet, the theme of love, um, it is a bit different from the um, Petrarchan sonnets because uh, in the Petrarchan sonnets we we find the um, po the um, uh, representation of a spiritual love, while in Shakespeare we find also a real physical love and also the theme of marriage linked to the main theme of love. So love is presented as spiritual, physical and uh, intending marriage. But we also have the theme of time, which is really important. Um, time is seen as the enemy okay, of human beings and of all the uh, living creatures. But we also have the theme of opposition. How can we oppose to time? And his uh, proposals are procreation and poetry. Okay, so um, Shakespeare present uh, a way to oppose uh, to the um, to um, we can say to stop the passing of time um, to abolish uh, the damages created by the passing of time using procreation and poetry. What does it mean procre procreation? If you uh, give life to um, children, you uh, are able to preserve your we can say your origin, your nature, and your life will be uh, longer thanks to your um, children. But another very important way is the use of poetry, because poetry, as all the forms of art, is able to stop the passing of time because it makes you eternal, uh, it has the power to eternize um, things, uh, human beings as well as objects, and they live forever. They are young and beautiful forever. Um, so what is original about his themes? I've already presented to you that I've already told you that um, okay, Petrarch, sorry for that mistake, okay, um, that uh, it is presented, love is presented not only from a, a spiritual point of view, but also from a physical one, and 
Another difference is that while in Petrarch all the women all uh, presented the love the woman presented is idealized, she's a kind of goddess, in Shakespeare um, the woman is not a goddess. She's presented as a very realistic, ordinary woman, okay, with no particular qualities, no supernatural qualities, but all the same, he loves her. So he wants to abolish, to, um, we can say, to fight against the idea that uh, love is always linked to perfection, to physical perfection. He wants to make us understand that love is something different from physical perfection. Today in class we read Shall I Compare Thee, which is sonnet number 18. We normally don't have the title in the Shakespearean sonnets as we have in uh, Petrarchan sonnet, but the scholars did, uh, decided to add the title, which is normally taken from the first line of the sonnet, uh, also to be um, to to make it easier to remember or recognize or find out sonnets instead of using simple numbers. Um, the main theme, uh, three themes in this sonnet um, are love, the passing of time and eternity. Um, if you remember, we read it and we saw, we noticed that uh, in the first two quatrains uh, there was the idea of beauty compared to a summer day, compared to um, the buds of rose, the um, buds of roses of May, uh, and also the strength of uh, the sun, and also the strength of uh, nature, and um, so all these uh, ideas, positive ideas. But we also remember, you also remember that at the end of the second war train, there was. Uh, the idea, the negative idea of passing of time, when he says, in every fear from fear sometimes declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. Okay, so the idea that all this beauty is corrupted, finally corrupted by the passing of time. And uh, at the beginning of the third portrait, we have the turning point, which is introduced by but. Okay, with this turning point, the poet changes his mind and he suddenly, shock, uh, he suddenly shocks the reader, sorry for forgetting the S, the reader uh, saying that poetry is the only uh, way to make them to make them who are them uh, it is strength love youth beauty to make uh, um, uh, them eternal and in the final couplet there is um, summing up uh, of the meaning of the whole poem because in the last two lines it say it says so long as man can breathe and eyes can see so long lives these and these gives light gives light to thee okay so we see that uh, there is a um, um, positive ending because he uh, he promised to um, the men or to the woman to whom he dedicated the the sonnet that thanks to his poetry, thanks to his poem, um, he will live and will be uh, young and beautiful forever. Uh, I told you why, uh, why did I tell you um, a man or a woman? Because um, I just wanted to, uh, to make a surprise to you, but I introduce right now because today you told me that he is uh, dedicating the poem to a young lady, to a woman, but because we are, um, 
we are used to Petrarchan sonnets which are dedicated to women but this poem is actually dedicated to a man exactly the Earl of Southampton as I told you the man the uh, young uh, man to whom he dedicated part of his poems in order to uh, get um, uh, to get the possibility to survive um, how can I present the sonnet? Okay, because when we read the sonnet, of course, you have to know the translation of the sonnet and you have to read the sonnet, but you also have to um, present the sonnet, to talk about the sonnet. First of all, you have to use uh, to look at visual details. So I can say, for example, this sonnet is made up of three quatrains and a final couplet. The rhyming scheme of the sonnet is, and I say A, B, A, B, etc. We can find in the poem examples of alliteration, repetition, assonance, there is a metaphor, okay, and so on. So you have to revise what the alliteration is. If you remember, the alliteration is the repetition of the same uh, initial consonant. Or assonance, the repetition of the same initial vocal. Okay. Or repetition of the same word. For example, in this poem, you see nor lose, nor shall, so long, so long. Okay. Um, and often and every fear so you see that there are some repetition some repetitions there is a metaphor we noticed it this morning so you have to um, analyze the different figures of speech you find in the poem in the uh, sonnet then we have we we can say the poet compares his friend to Okay, what does he compare his friend to? To a summer day, to um, um, buds, to the buds of May. Okay, to, so to flowers. And for example, the best of two is why? Because uh, you remember that we read that uh, summer is sometimes uh, um, too hot. Okay, the wind is too rough, okay, while the boy, the, the, the person to whom is dedicating the poem is uh, um, moderate, uh, is uh, lighter, okay, so if we make a comparison, in the comparison, uh, the person seems to be better. Then we, we have together with the idea of beauty, strength, okay, we find the theme of time. And time is considered an enemy because, and you say what you know, what you read, so what does the poet do? He promises his friend, he promises I, uh, his friend something, okay. Um, then what uh, it is important when you um, describe when you talk about a poem a novel everything uh, you talk about that you express your personal opinion okay uh, because you know i told you that literature is something sometimes personal i can make an analysis uh, an objective analysis from a technical point of view but in order to um, when we talk about the quality of the poem of the work of art of the book i have i can express my personal opinion my personal uh, preference so i can say i like this sonnet because it is for example about an ideal of um, love which I share or uh, I don't like it because the, the idealistic love he presents is something I don't share 
or you can say i find the images uh, presented very useful the comparisons are very effective interesting i don't like the first lines or i like the first lines but i don't like when he says uh, that i agree or i disagree with a poem uh, with a poet when he says so you can use very simple uh, mm, uh, you can express very simple uh, um, ideas, opinions about the work of art, the novel, the sonnet, the poem, the book, okay, uh, giving your personal justification, okay, because when you say, I like, in my opinion, I think it is, no one can say that you are wrong, okay, I can Mm, uh, tell you I don't share your opinion okay or uh, my uh, my opinion is different or my point of view is different but your personal opinion about a work of art is not uh, um, wrong or correct okay so you don't have to say I like it because I told you that it is a beautiful poem uh, you can say i don't like it because the idea presented is uh, for example uh, is uh, too much um, dated is too much old i don't i don't share his opinion about okay so thank you for listening uh, i hope it is it will be easier to study and to to do your work on the poem your homework on the poem enjoy